Am I broadcast? No. Okay, it shows me that it's on. Okay, we're good. Good. Welcome to worship this Sunday, which is the Sunday of the Transfiguration of our Lord. It is the last of the Epiphany season before we begin the season of Lent, a joyful day in the church as a general rule. I hope that each of you have received um, a separate handout that looks like this. Um, we will be using this at the top of the service. Just briefly in announcements today, I think that Sarah has done a terrific job in putting the announcements on the announcement sheet, and so I would direct your attention to that. Um, our service today begins with recognition of the situation in the world, particularly Eastern Europe, specifically Ukraine. I want to share two things that I have learned, because I didn't know this before. I've often heard that area referred to as the Ukraine. That is the Russian way of referring to that area in the same way that we might in this country refer to the Rockies. The Ukrainian people refer to their state as Ukraine. Similarly, the capital, Russia, the Russian pronunciation is Kiev, as in chicken Kiev. The Ukrainian pronunciation is Kiev. The words that we use and how we use them matter in this time. So come on up. Okay. I'd like to begin today with a, a work that I found who was written by the poet John Rodell. He writes this. I can't make the world peaceful. I can't stall tanks from roaring down roads. <clears throat> I can't prevent children from having to hide in bunkers. I can't convince the news to stop turning war into a video game. I can't silence the sound of bombs tearing neighborhoods apart. I can't turn a guided missile into a bouquet of flowers. I can't make a warmonger have an ounce of empathy. I can't convince ambassadors to quit playing truth or dare. I can't deflect a sniper's bullet from turning a wife into a widow. I can't stave off a country being reduced to ash and rubble. I can't do any of that. The only thing I can do is love the next person I encounter without any conditions or strings. To love my neighbor so fearlessly that it starts a ripple that stretches from one horizon to the next. I can't force peace on the world, but I can become a force of peace in the world because sometimes all it takes is a single lit candle in the darkness to start a movement. Lord, make me a candle of comfort in this world. Let me burn with peace. You have received this litany, this brief rite. Let me go sit down. And we are going to follow that now as a new hymn to us is at the top of that on the inside of the folder. And Harold will sing that and then we will follow in the refrain. by the half verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. 
though its waters roar and foam. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning comes. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant peace among the nations. War and conflicts abound in the world you have created. And we are particularly mindful this day of the war and conflict and danger in Eastern Europe and Ukraine. Stir the hearts and minds and wills of all people and leaders in this situation that solutions may be found and further death averted. Help us all to be people who seek peace and pursue it. We trust you, O Lord, because of your love for us poured out in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, who is our peace. Amen. These words from St. Matthew, these words from Jesus recorded in St. Matthew. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We sing. We prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who have been denied the blessing of My friends, rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted in the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. And now a brief announcement. It's very good that we put the hymnals back into the, into the pew racks last week because there's a mistake in the worship folder. The actual hymn number, you'll want to use your hymnal, is 834, 834. I mean, both of these are wonderful hymns, but, <laughs> but we're going to use 834. in this My friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Exodus 34, 29 to 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, 
Moses did not know what the skin of his, that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking to God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near and he gave them the commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And then he, when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 99 is read responsibly by a full verse. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord great in Zion, is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name, O Lord. They call upon you, and you can answer them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies, and the decree that you gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, we put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ it is set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of God, as they reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the consciousness, conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. 
Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of Jesus' departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we will be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in her consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Transfiguration Sunday is one of my favorite Sundays in the church year. It's right up there with all saints and Pentecost. I'm not exactly sure why, but it is. As I went back over the other 13 times that I have preached on the Transfiguration, I saw themes of mountaintop experiences. And it's fitting, isn't it? Because this does take place on a mountaintop. And in those sermons that I reviewed, I saw references to thin places. We've spoken of them before. Those places referenced in Celtic spirituality where the veil between the divine and the ordinary becomes extraordinarily thin, and we can almost feel ourselves stepping into the throne room of God, the creator of all that is, both seen and unseen. You may know those moments. Perhaps you felt this at the birth of a child or at the death of a loved one. Perhaps you have glory bumps or goose bumps that come over you at the Christmas Eve candlelight service as we sing Silent Night and the sanctuary is lit with candles. Or perhaps it is the sound of all of the voices resounding together as the Easter profession starts, Jesus Christ is risen today. Or maybe a thin place for you is found in nature beside still waters, as the psalmist writes. Each of these are cherished in many ways by many people across time and place. Can you imagine what it may have been like for Peter, James, and John, the fishermen, who just a short time earlier caught an overwhelming catch of fish that threatened to swamp their boats, and upon seeing this, they were dumbstruck and left it all to follow this amazing man. And follow him they did, from the level place, from the plain, to homes and villages and towns in Galilee in the northern part of the Holy Land, then out on the Sea of Galilee, and even into the lands that were traditionally unclean and to be avoided by good and faithful Jews. People were healed. Demons were cast out, storms were calmed, Herod was confronted, John the Baptist was arrested, the tax collectors were dinner companions, the sinners flocking to this one who loved on them. The 5,000 were fed, 
and John the Baptist was beheaded. And then, as the disciples were alone with Jesus, came the question and answer. Jesus asked, Who do they say I am? And the disciples answered, Some say Elijah. Others say John the Baptist. And others, one of the prophets of old. And then the piercing question. And you, who do you say that I am? And on behalf of the disciples, Peter said, you are the Christ of God. And Jesus tells them for the first time what this means. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Three times in the Gospel of Luke we hear this. Jesus brings this truth to his disciples' attention. I wonder what they made of that. And then Jesus adds on to this and tells them that they too will join into this, that they too must take up their cross and follow, that they too must lose their life in order to save it, and if they try to save their life, they will lose it. Oh, the perplexing doublespeak and talk of this from the Christ of God. And then a short time later, only a few days perhaps, Jesus gathers Peter and James and John and brings them up a mountain. Mountains are so very important in Scripture. Moses met with God on Mount Sinai numerous times, face to face with the Holy One of the universe. Elijah on Mount Horeb met with God, who appeared not in the wind, not in the fire, not in the earthquake, No, not even in the still, small voice. God appeared to Elijah in the sound of sheer silence on the mountain. Jesus gave his first sermon in the Gospel of Matthew. Mountains, mountaintop experiences, thin places. And Peter and James and John were so enraptured of this experience in the presence of Jesus, whose face was altered and whose clothing changed to dazzling white. Jesus, who then was visited by Moses on one side and Elijah on the other, who appeared with him in their glory, not in physical body, but a glorious sense of their being. And Peter, you gotta love Peter. Peter comes up with a plan. Lord, it's wonderful to be here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make three dwellings and we can hang out here because this is flat out wonderful. And then the voice came from heaven. Words heard at Jesus' baptism. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And then it was done. The glory had vanished. Moses and Elijah were no more. They all kept silent. A thin place, indeed. Oh, bring it, Lord, I pray. I need a mountaintop. I need to feel glory bumps. I need to stand in a place where there is glory all around. God, I need a thin place. But all I am left with at this time, this week, dear God, is a thick place. A place of despair and fear for what may be ahead. A place with a heart torn with sorrow for the families who are being separated as mother and children leave and father stays to fight, to fight a megalomaniacal tyrant, however genius one may believe him to be, as he maps out a savvy military strategy 
that threatens Europe and indeed the world. I am in a thick place, bound by the pall of senseless violence, a pall that will cover the dead. I am confounded by the conflict and violence and terrorism gripping so many places on our globe. We dare not think that it is only Europe. More places than can be named in the time that we have, but I start the list. Chad, Ethiopia, Mali, Libya, Nigeria, Syria, Yemen, Venezuela, and the list goes on and on and on. The pacifist theologian Walter Wink has said that the greatest religion on the planet is not Islam, Hinduism, Judaism, or even Christianity. The greatest religion on this planet is the pervasive faith in violence. A thick place. If, like me, you too are in a thick place, what then are we to do? As the poet John Rodell noted in what I read at the top of the service, I am not able to stop a tank or convince a sniper to come down or to cast a pall of joy and peace over all at war. No. But this I can do. I can light a candle every day, all day, as an act of prayer. That its bit of light may shine in darkness, that its fragrance may sweeten the air, that its mere presence may bring my heart away from the tasks of my day to the needs of others, and in that, in some way that I do not understand, but may only be perceived by God, we are joined together with the suffering around us. And this we can do. Like Peter, we can seek out the dwelling such as we have here in which to find refuge. And in that dwelling, we can be in the presence of Jesus and of one another. However thick that place may be that we are in, we can be in it together. And in that togetherness, the Holy Spirit may move and kindle in us the fire of her love. In this, we recognize that we are not alone, however heavy the pall of dismay and this thick place may be around us. And this we can do. We can gather at the holy table where God provides a thin place that does not depend upon our emotion or our feeling, a thin place where the liturgy tells us that we are joined together with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, offering prayer and praise as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. And at this holy table, we eat of this holy meal that works in us in ways that defy human understanding, ways that draw us closer to God and to one another. And thereby, let there be no mistake, we are being transformed from glory into glory. And in all of this, the heavy pall of the thick place lightens and gives way to the divine of the Holy One breaking through and bringing light into our darkness because Jesus is life and the light of all people in this light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. And so, we too are drawn then from the thick place of fear and despair and anger 
through the waters of our baptisms and fed at the table to the place where we too can let our light shine before others so that they may see our good works and give glory to God, our loving Father in heaven. And in this, my friends, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing?
correspondence so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Let us be amazed by your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. Mm -hmm. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You love justice and established equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community, nonprofit organizations, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and the sound and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive because of the care of the common good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick or in any distress, particularly Alina, Jenna, Margaret, Anna Mae, Julie, Alan, Carol, Ann, Alan, Joanne, Clarine, Betty, Jane, Bob, Dion, Dottie, Teresa, Tim, Julie, Ruth, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Joyce, Barbara, and Shelby. Give patience to those waiting for answers and skill to all who are caring for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the season of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this time. Pastors, deacons, musicians, worship leaders, and planners, and all who contribute to our worship life, God of grace. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace, that following their example, we do not lose heart. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in trust and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated.
O God, sovereign of the universe, you offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. Amen. and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
We are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, to your pew down the side aisle. Please come, all is now ready.
us unto life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks. No, one more. We sing. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, his shalom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And one other announcement. Because of the events of the week, I changed our sending hymn away from what's in your worship folder. Open your hymnal, please, to number 705. 705. Go in peace, light a candle, work for good. Thanks be to God. <laughs>